at first it's kind of frustrating like not having a car for two years but I feel like it's perfect to like get used to getting around different ways but I've seen like my friends who didn't have that rule at their university and they have not stopped using their car ever since so overall it was a very good move. Thank you for joining me uh to talk about your your league award um congratulations on winning we're looking forward to getting to know you better and sharing your story with people who love biking as much as us um, we're really hoping that by sharing these stories, other people will kind of see themselves in our award winners and be inspired to do more things to improve bicycling in their communities or wherever they live. Um, so with that, uh, let's dive into some questions and talk about uh, why we're really all here, which is bikes and how great they are. Um, so, you know, you, you were recognized as the emerging leader. Um, how did your bike story begin? Yeah, um, I think I started biking as a kid um was never super into it just kind of learned to ride um kind of took a break through middle school and high school um getting back into college I knew that I, I lived like 20 minutes from my college so I kept the same job that I had over the summer which was like five miles away from campus um you're not allowed to have a car on campus for the first two years so Knowing that I like started biking was like this it was a great job um working in like a zip lining course um but I had to bike to work so I was like practicing the whole summer before to build up my endurance eventually did that um I worked there for like two and a half years during school so I commuted every weekend um and then started bike commuting I only ended up getting a car last year so like the first three years of college just commuting by bike everywhere um and in commuting realized how un like unfriendly <laughs> um my town is for biking even though with some practice it's doable but not ideal by any means yeah I, I feel like I had a, a similar experience when I was in law school I started just biking to the gym and the grocery store and then I, I realized how how unnecessarily difficult it is. And yeah. 10 years later, here I am. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, did the pandemic affect how you biked or, or how you engaged with biking? Um, so I go to the University of Connecticut, she just graduated, but I was in, so that COVID started 2020 my sophomore year and has been going since then but um a lot of our classes were online so I live like five miles off campus it's bikeable but hilly um and not fun in the winter um or in the dark or whatever um because I only had to do one class or it was like one or two classes on campus I was able to extend the time that I could get by just biking because if it was twice a week. It was way more doable than meeting every day. Um, oh, also a lot of classes had flexibility with attending online. So if it was snowy or rainy and I didn't want to go, I could just attend online. So that was really nice. Nice. Yeah, and, and congratulations on, on graduating. That's awesome Thank to you. hear. And I, I hear that you have a very exciting summer trip planned. Um, can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, so I'm biking with the organization Bike and Build from Florida to California, it's on their southernmost route. They, um, so we bike for about five days, 70-ish miles per day, depends. And then every five days or so, we build an affordable housing site. Um, a lot of Habitat for Humanity, but local sites as well. Um, we stay with our generous hosts, mostly churches, sometimes individuals. Um, and I guess explore the country and meet new people while also learning about affordable housing throughout the country. It sounds like an awesome experience. I'm sure it'll be a great trip um, and really cool to combine uh, the two issues of, of biking and affordable housing. Um, you know, that's, that's one of the things we, we know if if more people are going to live in kind of those bikeable distance to places, we need more affordable housing uh, near where people work, where people go to school, and, and all those things. Um, you 
know, so we have more of those three to five mile trips that are, are bikeable. Yes, definitely. Uh, um, was there uh, a person or a moment that really drew you into the world of bike advocacy? How did you get interested in being an advocate? Yeah, um, I guess I have two things. So I took a class, I'm in studying environmental science to like learn about the climate crisis and re the need for reduction in fossil fuels and um, all that. Um, at UConn, like the transportation section is like completely separate from environmental science, which I think is kind of, doesn't really make sense because there's a lot of overlap there. But I was able to take a case studies and transportation planning um, with Norman Garrick, who's a great bike advocate. Um, he it was his class was amazing. We the first like third of it we learned about um, city planning and I'm from Connecticut, so we talked a lot about Hartford and how it started as like an accessible city, um, but then was destroyed by highways. Um, so we learned about cities that didn't do things great. And then the second part of the semester, we spent um, doing a really in-depth case study on a city of our choosing. I did Utrecht in the Netherlands, and they're like a great biking city. So we got to see like what things they were doing well um, through a series of presentations. So that was really eye-opening to me. Um, in I took a lot of that knowledge from that class. I also am a fellow with the Bold Women's Fellowship, Bold Women's Leadership Network. Um, and through that, we did, we were able to have an independent summer project between junior year and senior year on anything of our choosing. Is, uh, I guess a leadership project was like pretty open-ended, any sort of outcome. So I was able to spend last summer working on that. Um, where I did like advocacy um, through working with a co-op in Hartford, Connecticut. And what else did I do? Um, I learned a lot about bike maintenance, worked with BC Coast Camp, um, and planned different events on campus, like a group ride and different um, events for orientation to provide resources to get biking for students. Awesome. Yeah, I've seen uh, Norman Garrick uh, present at a couple of conferences and he's great. So I'm mean, extremely uh, fortunate that, that you got to learn from him. And I'm really glad that that inspired you to, to get engaged and um, you were able to pursue that through the Bold Women's Leadership um, Program. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, how, how do you hope the next few years of bike advocacy change the built environment? Um, make it easier for people to bike and safer for people to bike? Yeah, I think, um, I mean, COVID brought the bike boom of everyone wanting to get outside. I hope that continues. Um, in like the last few years of my life, I um, have gone from riding on like back roads to experimenting riding through the town center, which is never fun, but um, is doable. Um, now I've been I've been training for my summer ride, getting a lot of miles in, in the last month or so. Um, and I want to see more people be feeling comfortable on a bike, maybe challenging where they can go, um, what you can access on a bike, even if it's just like a few errands or stops. And I just want to see more people riding and then I don't know so it's more normalized drivers can learn how to drive with bikes and yeah I don't know once there's demand I hope cities can recognize that and build better infrastructure for bikes yeah I mean I, I think those uh the short trips to even a store too many places it, it really requires planning and like knowing the streets and what's going to be most comfortable so I, yeah, I, I hope that more people look out, get out there and also more cities are trying to proactively make it safer and easier to understand which streets are safer or build those facilities so that it's kind of a, a safer facility for, for people biking. 
Um, how do you hope bike advocacy as a, a movement might change or grow in the next few years? I think like bringing in intersectionality to bike advocacy could be really great. Um, whether it be which, you know, thinking about which areas have bike infrastructure and what bringing in bike infrastructure does. Um, for example, working in Hartford, and there's a lot of people who depend on bikes for transportation, and they have done great work with um, getting more bike lanes. But um, actually, yeah, I don't know, just need to like be cognizant of gentrification and the effects of that, um, as well as like providing similar um, micro mobility solutions for people that might be disabled or not able to, or whatever, not able to ride a bike, but might wanna still have an alternative to a car, whether it be public transit or I don't know, something electric powered. Um, you still have a lot of benefits of being outside, um, fresh air, more mobility, but even like working through a disability that could be really helpful. Yeah, I, I think those are, are great places for us as a movement to work and for advocates to think about. You know, I, I really appreciate in our conversation, you brought up affordable housing and the climate crisis and those things. And, and now with intersectionality, more of how different demographic groups are impacted and able to access biking or not, or how uh, the spread of bike infrastructure might impact them is, is a really important thing to, to pay attention to. Um, so I, I appreciate you, you thinking of all the ways that biking relates to the world and communities and, and how we move forward together. Um, are, are there things I haven't asked you that I should have? I can't think of anything right now. Okay. Um, any other experiences you want to highlight or share? Um, yeah, I guess I can talk about a little bit of my experience with biking on campus. Um, I think like one of my other inspirations to start like bike advocacy was, it's always like hearing from my friends of, um, I had a few friends that were moving off campus, not even too far, just a few miles and hearing them saying, oh, like I can't go get groceries. I have to figure out how to do this on a bike. I don't know. I don't feel comfortable riding on the road. Um, and hearing people near me like have similar struggles made me, want to do different things to make them feel comfortable. Um, whether, uh, like, sometimes they say, I just bring them along for a ride. Um, it's always helpful to have someone more experienced to, like, lead you in different activities, um, which is why I wanted to do a group ride and, like, different orientation impacts or activities for, like, mapping, um, providing which routes are most helpful and other like tips on gear and what to buy for that. Um, I think like within my campus community, we still have a lot of work to do with that. Um, my event was one year and I'm now graduating. Um, I did work with UConn's recreation department as a bike mechanic and did different we held different, we had all sorts of things. We had group rides, um, intro to bike maintenance, advanced bike maintenance, other all sorts of clinics about biking. Um, I hope that they adopt the orientation approach, but I'm not sure. I'm graduating and I, uh, yeah, I'd like to see advocacy, advocacy continue after I'm gone, but that's up to people. <laughs> yeah, I, I hope it continues too. I, I think the, the orientation approach, getting people, um, when there's a major life change, 
is just a huge opportunity to introduce people to a new way of doing things since everything else is kind of disrupted. Um, you know, I, I know that there's research out there that says like, that's the time if, if you're gonna make a change in how you get around, uh, it's gonna be when you get a new job or you move to a new place or, or you go to university. Um, so that's a, a really important place to engage people and, and thank you for, for spearheading all of that. Yeah. Yeah, I, at first it's kind of frustrating, like not having a car for two years, but I feel like it's perfect to like get used to getting around different ways. But I've seen like my friends who didn't have that rule at their university and they have not stopped using their car ever since. So overall, it was a very good move. Good. And, and hopefully, you know, Hartford's improving. Um, you mentioned that uh, highways really did a number to it. Um, so I'm sure that there's a lot of work to do there. Yes. Um, yeah, I followed Greater Hartford Mobility and they seem to be doing a lot of good work with um, increasing mobility within the city. Um, are, are there... Are there particular parts along your cross country tour that you're looking forward to? Um, okay, I was like thinking about it. We're I'm from Connecticut, super hilly. Training here is um, very difficult, <laughs> but thinking about going to Florida, I like checked our route and I was like, oh my God, this is so flat, but also um, it's 93 degrees right now. So <laughs> um, I'm excited to see different scenery, um, meet different people along the way. I think like no other experience would let you connect with like this many people or um, oh, this many people along the route as well as um, you can like ex riding on a bike is such a different experience than driving. Um, I find that Recently, I only like remember where I am if I've like biked on that road before. Um, so I feel like it'll be really great to be in a different surrounding and meet different people, enjoy hopefully the, the flat road for a little bit until we get to know. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I hope the I hope the roads are good. Certainly flat. I, I know Florida has some some fast roads, <laughs> so hopefully they're also safe. Um, and yeah, totally, totally agree with experiencing a community while you're riding a bike. It's just so different than being in a car. Um, like it's just so much easier to notice the world around you, stop and, and look at something if it's interesting, all of that kind of, uh, kind of serendipitous fun stuff is, is hopefully, uh, something you, you get on your trip. Yeah. I'm super excited. I'm good. Um, well, if, if you don't have any questions for me or other things that, um, you want to talk about, I, I think we can probably wrap up, but, we, you know, if there's anything else you want to get out there, um, I, I know you mentioned, like, transportation is, is separate from climate, and, and we hear that a lot as an organization, um, and we'd love to hear that connection made more. Um, so I, I don't know if there's anything there you'd like to say. Um, yeah, just to elaborate on that, we like environmental science is like in at least at UConn is in the College of Agriculture, um, and, and transportation planning is like grouped in engineering, and there's like very little overlap in them. Um, I like the class that I got into was specifically for engineering students. Um, and I only got an, I like heard from, about it from a friend who did an individualized major in um, transport, I don't know, transportation planning, like geography, and climate. I'm not really positive what it was, but <laughs> it was a lot of overlapping between the two. Um, and yeah, I, I feel like sometimes engineering is more like building, whereas um, in my experience, like environmental science, people that are super passionate about certain issues. Um, yeah, and I think like the overlap is super key to like building things that are essential for um, society to improve, especially 
considering all these other social factors. Um, yeah, building without knowing, you know, the effects of gentrification and affordable housing and all these other things is just not helpful, can make it even worse as we've seen in the past before. Yeah, de definitely agree. Um, you know, thinking about the future we want and that future to be one where people can safely bike and walk and scoot and take public transit around. Um, if, if we aren't planning for that and we aren't building for that, we aren't gonna get it. Yeah. Well, all right. Um, if there's, there's nothing else, you know, thank you so much for joining me. Congratulations on being named Emerging Leader. Um, so excited for your cross country trip and I hope that goes amazingly. And congratulations on graduating from the University of Connecticut. That's Thank you. all amazing. It was great to talk to you. Thanks. Uh, great to talk to you too.